Are you digging up the dirt on your dead? Want to find out how? Hear the latest on new family history sources and websites with interesting and fun guests and experts. Find out what other people have been learning about their ancestors. From kings to thieves, inventors to farmers, nothing that's been discovered should surprise us anymore, but it always does. Find out what we mean. Great family history stories and information are on the way now with Extreme Genes, Family History Radio, and ExtremeGenes.com. Grandpa stole his first buggy in 1892. Uh, I met your grandma, Pig Sloppin', in 46. Oh, every Christmas we'd visit my Uncle Fred in prison. Hello, Genies, and welcome back to Extreme Genes Family History Radio and ExtremeGenes.com, America's family history show, where we shake your family tree and watch the nuts fall out. I am Fisher, your radio root sleuth. Let's start this week by welcoming our latest affiliate to our growing family of radio stations, News Radio 1029 KARN in Arkansas. Great to be a part of Adam Thomas's Saturday lineup, and no doubt there's some great family history to be found in the natural state. Well, this week you'll be blown away by what our first guest has to tell you. His name is Daniel Swalm, and he lives in Minnesota. And like most of us, he just wants to learn more about his family. And in the process of working the records of his grandmother, he learned that despite the fact that she was born in Minnesota and died in Minnesota, almost 90 years ago, and never left the country, at the time of her passing, she wasn't a citizen of any country. In fact, when a United States senator heard about it, all he could say was, wow. Why? Daniel will explain in about eight minutes. Oh, and by the way, the same thing may hold true for your ancestors. I'd never heard of this before, and I'll bet you haven't either. You won't want to miss it. Then, a friend of the show, Ron Fox, returns to talk about collecting your ancestors. It's doable and a lot of fun. I've been doing some of this lately, and we'll tell you all about how you can do it later in the show. Our Extreme Genes poll this week has to do with this type of collecting. We asked, have you ever found anything on eBay or similar sites relating to your ancestors? Yes or no? 56% of you voted yes, 44% no. And this week, we asked the question... Is there a family legend in your lines that you just haven't been able to prove, yes or no? Cast your vote at ExtremeGenes.com and feel free to tell us about it on our Facebook page. And while you're there, give us a like. We'd love to have you as part of our Facebook community. Want to be on the show? We love hearing your stories. Call our toll-free find line at 1-234-56-GENES. That's 1-234-56-GENES, G-E-N-E-S. You can also ask questions there and make comments, and who knows, we may end up shining a spotlight on your ancestor and story of discovery. Jennifer Douglas of Reading, Pennsylvania, sent me this email at fisher at extremegenes.com. She writes, Fisher, concerning last week's show with Janet about how to break the news to family members about skeletons in your closet or how to delicately write about them, you sure seem to have more than your share of scoundrels back there. Just saying. Uh, Guilty as charged. But I guarantee you, you have a few too, Jennifer. You just might not know much about them yet. We all have heroes and scoundrels, just like we all have kings and paupers back there. Just remember what Janet said. There's always some hero in our scoundrels as well as some scoundrel in our heroes. If you missed last week's conversation on this, check out the podcast on iTunes, iHeartRadio, or ExtremeGenes.com. And don't forget to download the totally free Extreme Genes podcast app for Android and iPhone, available now in your phone store. Well, here is this week's family histoire news from the pages of ExtremeGenes.com. It almost feels like 2013 again with regular stories about King Richard III. Well, last week we told you how the High Court of Britain finally ruled he could be buried in Leicester Cathedral. This week, Leicester University decided they wanted to know something about the king that they could finally determine once and for all. It's been passed down through the centuries that King Richard had a hunchback, you know, like Quasimodo. (laughs) When Richard was found beneath the parking lot last year in England, there was indeed a curve to his spine. 
Then the question became, was the curve natural or was it the result of the deterioration of the body? Well, how lucky we are. He was found at this late date because Leicester University has a Wowie 3D printer. And colleagues at nearby Loughborough University made CAT scans of the 500-year-old body. From that, the Lester U folks were able to make a 3D replica of Richard's spine. And from there, they were able to determine just how Richard stood. Their conclusion was that Richard wasn't hunchbacked. He was crooked-backed and short, too. The diagnosis? Scoliosis. With severe spine curvature, it would not have been easily visible to others. In fact, they said a good tailor could have created clothes for him that would have mostly hidden the problem. They also say he certainly had to have suffered from back pain. See photos and read more about it at ExtremeGenes.com. And who knows what other historic figures we're going to learn about in this way in the future. Next, the Brooklyn Daily Eagle reports on a man who dug a family Bible out of a trash bin, that happens all the time, and allowed it to take him on an amazing adventure. In 1982, Sean Walsh of Marston Hills, Massachusetts, was asked to lug a heavy trash bag out of his grandparents' Florida home while on a visit. When he dropped it on the curb, the bag busted open, revealing an old leather-bound Bible. Walsh was fascinated and took the book home, carrying it onto the plane. Well, a few years ago, he began researching the Walsh family names found in the book and learned about his third great-grandfather, John, who served in the Civil War. In time, he learned that his ancestor's grave was unmarked. Well, with the help of the VA, that matter was recently resolved as his ancestor finally got a tombstone in Brooklyn. Read the rest of this remarkable story. There's a lot more to it through the link at ExtremeGenes.com. And coming up next, he was just an average genie until he discovered something few, if any of us, knew anything about. And it just may tell you something about your female ancestors you're going to want to know. We'll talk to Daniel Swam of Minnesota next about his ancestral search that eventually resulted in a vote on the floor of the United States Senate. Amazing stuff. In three minutes on Extreme Genes, Family History Radio at ExtremeGenes.com. Genies. Not long ago, something happened with one particular online research service that changed everything. It happened with a service that already has 75 million members worldwide, and it's not who you think it is. Hi, it's Fisher, and you know I'm always looking for new and better ways for you to discover your ancestors, not just the data, but the stories. The online service I'm talking about takes your family tree and then uses its powerful automated technology to match the people in your tree to over 5 billion records from around the world. Censuses, newspaper stories, vital records with 97% accuracy. This means no more wading through thousands of useless so-called hints. This also means the site itself is constantly looking for matches for you even while you're sleeping. What site does all this? It's MyHeritage.com. You can try MyHeritage.com for free. Here's a special gift from me. Use discount code ExtremeGenes after signing up and get an exclusive 20% discount at MyHeritage.com. It will soon be here again, the largest family history event in the world. It's the 5th Annual Roots Tech Conference in Salt Lake City, Utah, February 12th through the 14th, 2015. Hosted by FamilySearch, Roots Tech is the perfect place to discover and share family connections, past, present, and future. Keynote speakers like family man and entertainer Donny Osmond and the founder of the upcoming global family reunion, A.J. Jacobs, will inspire and entertain you. Explore the massive expo hall with hundreds of technology and family history exhibitors. Visit the world-renowned Salt Lake Family History Library right across the street and choose from more than 200 educational classes taught by family history professionals. Early bird pricing is just $159 for a three-day pass, but hurry, it's only available for a limited time. Find out more now and get registered at RootsTech.org. That's RootsTech.org. It's RootsTech 2015, February 12th through 14th at the Salt Palace Convention Center in Salt Lake City, Utah. While we all love diving into the deep end of our gene pool, don't forget about capturing the histories of those who are still with us. Go to StoryWorth.com to start your family story today. Each week, StoryWorth.com will email a question to people whose stories you wish to preserve. Questions like, tell us about the day you got engaged, or what do you remember about your grandmother? All they have to do is reply with a story, either by email or by telephone. 
That story is then forwarded to the family and securely stored in a private online storybook. It doesn't get any simpler. You can enroll up to six storytellers for, get this, just $49 a year. You'll get a free one-month trial. And for a limited time, Extreme Jeans listeners get an additional 10% discount at StoryWorth.com slash Extreme Jeans. That's StoryWorth.com slash Extreme Jeans. Is your family story worth 13 cents a day? Sign up now at StoryWorth.com slash Extreme Jeans. Simple, secure, effective. Your story is worth telling. And welcome back to Extreme Genes Family History Radio, ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, the radio root sleuth. And, you know, most of us, when we do our research, we like to share it with our family, maybe some friends, extended family or whatever. And it doesn't go much beyond that. Maybe you do a book and it, it can get a little bit of attention. But what Daniel Swalm of Minnesota has done uh, is beyond, I think, what most of us could ever have imagined. And Daniel's on the line with us right now. How are you, Dan? I'm good. Thank you for having me on. Just delighted to have you here. And uh, let, let's just start with what your project was, and then we'll get to where this went, because it's really quite remarkable. You, like many of us, wanted to know a little more about your family. Yes. I was researching family history a number of years ago. I came across a piece of information that, that I had no idea existed. My grandmother, Elsie knutson Morn was born near Lake Superior in Minnesota's Arrowhead country in 1891. And she lived all of her life in Minnesota. She married my grandfather, who was a Swedish immigrant uh, carpenter who came and settled in northeastern Minnesota. And a, a lot of Scandinavians settled in Minnesota. Lots, yes, is very, very Scandinavian, uh, particularly on the North Shore. It's a mining and fishing and lumbering area, just like the old country. And they were married in 1914. Probably unbeknownst to her, and certainly unbeknownst to me as I was doing research, I discovered that on her wedding day in 1914, she was stripped of her American citizenship. What? Yes. <laughs> she was stripped of her American citizenship. Uh, uh, the Congress had passed in 1907 a law that was called the Expatriation Act. And it was a law that basically stated that if any American-born woman married somebody who was an immigrant who was not naturalized, and my grandfather was not naturalized at the time they were married, then that American woman, her citizenship was forfeit. And the, wow. the law was retroactive, so it, when it was passed in 1907, it meant that people that had been born and were married in the 1800s retroactively lost their citizenship. I did and not know so, that. I've never heard that. Amazing. Well, it's a, you know, it's kind of one of those unknown pieces of American history that probably uh, not Congress's finest hour. Right. <laughs> uh, the law was enforced by three presidential administrations, the, the Roosevelt administration, the Taft administration, and the Wilson administration. And the law was challenged in 1915 at the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court upheld the validity of the law. Wow. So it was a very bizarre law, and as women's suffrage gained steam... Right, uh, up to 1920. You know, yes. Parts of the law were repealed in 1922 with a piece of legislation called the Cable Act, and then... In 1940, the law was completely repealed. Now, now help but me that, to understand something, though, here, Daniel. Sure. And, and that is, if this went retroactively back into the 1800s, what happened yeah. when the man would naturalize? Would the woman automatically become an American citizen she, again? Right. Then she was renaturalized. She became a naturalized American citizen. Uh, <laughs> kind of weird, because she was already born here. I mean, so... Um, 
And the, the issue that I discovered, was, uh, how I actually discovered it was that there was a form that people had to fill out back uh, in those days. It was called the uh, Alien Registration and Property Form. And what they did is uh, the government had this form and people had to fill it out and turn it in. And the rationale behind that was that if a Mrs. Rockefeller or a Mrs. Carnegie or, or you know, somebody from the Gilded Age married the Duke of Bulgaria or the Baron of who knows where in Europe, their money and property would not have been allowed to be transferred. Now, you have to remember that wow. in the 19-teens, that was during the time of World War One was going on, and then the United States entered in 1917, and, and that was when my grandma's document was dated. I had no clue, because this was never talked about by my parents and in my family, because Grandma Elsie died in 1926. Uh, she died in childbirth. Both she and the baby died. Quite young. Yes, yes. She was probably about 35. And then my grandfather did not get his naturalization until 1928. As I was researching this and finding all this stuff out, I just kept, I just kept digging and poking and researching. And, and what I found was that this had not just affected my grandmother, but it had literally affected thousands and thousands of people all over the United States. And, and so your grandmother, because her husband didn't naturalize till after her passing, actually died as a, well, I wouldn't say a foreign citizen, just as a citizen of no country at all, right? She was, she was, exactly. She died expatriated and not a citizen of any country, even though she lived her entire life in the arrowhead of Minnesota. He never, never left the country to the best of my knowledge. They were not a wealthy. They were, you know, my grandfather was a carpenter. She was a housewife. They had three previous children, my mother and then my two uncles, and they have all since passed away. But... Yeah, it was just one of those historical oddities, and the more that I researched it and the more I found out about it, the more irritated I got. Yeah, yeah I would too, yeah. Now, this thing wasn't repealed before she passed either, so... No, this And this applied to many people, and many people listening no doubt have ancestors in a similar situation. Absolutely. So what I did, I did a number of things. I wrote an editorial for the local paper here in the Twin Cities for the Minneapolis Star Tribune about my, my grandmother's story. It was titled, The Citizens That a Nation and Time Forgot, and it's still online, and people can still Google it and find it. I then started a Facebook page called Justice for Elsie, which I told the story and then I also met with representatives of Senator Al Franken and told them the story. And much to my surprise, they were very interested. They, nobody had heard of this. They were very interested in it. And so we began a process to either restore citizenship to my grandmother and these women, or to at least have that wrong acknowledged in some way. And as, the, as we went on, it became apparent that it was just going to be too much of a legislative nightmare to posthumously restore the citizenship, which kind of irritated me sure. because the law that stripped people of citizenship was retroactive. So, yes. you know, oh, no, well, we don't do that anymore. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, uh, uh, so then we hit, I hit on the idea that the Senate passes resolutions. And I said, how about if we write a resolution that the Senate can then vote on that it will apologize, that will acknowledge the wrong that was done to Grandma Elsie and to all of the other grandmas out there, and see where that goes. The story was picked up by uh, a reporter from the Los Angeles Times. Uh, and look at it go. And look at it go, exactly. The Washington Post had a story about it. I mean, and so I started hearing from people all over the country, and what we were able to do was to, because of the people that reached out to me 
from different parts of the country, we were able to find co-sponsors for Senator Franken's resolution. And so the first person to sign on was Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin. Senator Franken's a Democrat, Senator Johnson is a Republican. And so right there, you know, we had some bipartisan consensus. Yep. Holy some, cow, Grandma Elsie could bring the whole country together Grandma, here. Boy, I tell you, you know, Grandma <laughs> Elsie was rocking. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the resolution was finally passed this past month unanimously. Wonderful. In the, in the Senate. Unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah. And I have to say that this this was this had nothing to do with me because I'm I'm not uh, connected enough or smart enough or, or or anything to do any of this. I, I this was something where I was being guided by uh, some kind of higher power wherever wherever that Absolutely. higher power resides because they were they were filling me with the the right words to say to the right people at the right time because I you know I don't have the I don't have the smarts to do that on my own. Well, maybe Grandma Elsie doesn't have her citizenship back, but she certainly has been acknowledged in the right places. The United States Senate. And, and we made it happen. And Memorial Day at the Women's Suffrage Memorial Garden in St. Paul on the grounds of the Minnesota State Capitol, I met with Senator Franken and there were members of the public at large and the media there. And Senator Franken spoke and talked about his efforts at the, in the Senate and presented me with a copy of the official resolution with the, the seal of the Senate on it, uh, framed the whole nine yards, which was a very nice honor to receive. And I presented Senator Franken with the only photograph of Grandma Elsie, signed from her entire family, which is now, you know, I'm her grandson, and then there's, there's great-grandchildren, and then there's great-great-grandchildren, I'm the only one still here in Minnesota, but there are relatives in Washington State, Oregon, California, Arizona, Texas, and Massachusetts. Well, you've absolutely written a new chapter in your family history, and it's a big one. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I, I, I appreciate that. There were times when uh, I just figured uh, that, that I'd never hear from anybody again, and they'd just <laughs> write, write me off as like this crazy old coot that we should have never talked to in the first place. What a story. Daniel Swam from Minnesota, thank you so much for your time, and congratulations. Thank you very much. Have a, have a wonderful day. And coming up next, friend of the show and family history super sleuth, Ron Fox returns to talk about collecting your ancestors. It's not that hard to do, and the stuff you can find is amazing. We'll tell you all about it in five minutes on Extreme Genes, Family History Radio, and ExtremeGenes.com. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. ZapTheGrandmaGap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. Can't figure out how to get your favorite Windows genealogy software running on your MacBook? Look no further than Crossover. Crossover by Codeweavers at www.codeweavers.com allows you to run your Windows software on your Mac without the need to buy a copy of Windows. Crossover is easy to install and simple to use. Crossover supports many popular genealogy packages like Roots Magic, Legacy Family Tree, Personal Ancestral File, Family Tree Builder, and more. Crossover also lets you run other popular productivity apps like Microsoft Office and a wide range of games. So if you're looking for an easy, affordable solution to your Windows compatibility needs, 
Visit www.codeweavers.com today to download your free trial of Crossover. And don't forget to use the deal code FAMILY for an additional 40% off when you purchase Crossover. Hello, Extreme Jeans listeners. I'm Larry Gelwix, the getaway guru and host of the Travel Show radio broadcast with the hottest travel deals on the planet. And now you can travel more and pay less by joining me on our Travel Show podcast. Cruises, tours, resort hotels, airline tickets, stay close to home or travel the world. I'll show you how to travel more and pay less. Go online to columbusvacations.com. That's columbusvacations.com. Click on radio. Radio, and then click on podcast. It's really that simple. ColumbusVacations.com, radio and podcast for the hottest travel deals on the planet. Got a brick wall in your family tree? Don't know how to break through it? Get professional help from Heritage Consulting Genealogy Research Services. Speak directly with an experienced genealogical researcher, not a salesperson. By calling toll-free 1-877-537-2000. When you call, ask how you can win a free one-hour consultation with an expert genealogist. Heritage Consulting Genealogy Research Services. With over 35 years of research experience, visit HeritageConsulting.com. Did you know your family's memories are being destroyed a little at a time every day. It's true. Old home movies, slides, photos, and audio recordings fade over time. The longer you delay the digitizing of these priceless artifacts, the more likely it is they'll be gone one day. That's why you need to call the Multimedia Center. I brought in VHS videotape and had them transferred to DVD. The Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to transferduplication.com. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. Welcome back to Extreme Genes Family History Radio. ExtremeGenes.com. Fisher here, the Radio Root Sleuth. With my good friend, Ron Fox, who is a, a noted researcher, madman of sorts, in fact, who tracks down things that nobody else can ever find, especially in the realm of photographs. We've had Ron on before. Good to see you, Ron. Good to see you. Uh, you know, we thought today we'd talk a little about collecting your ancestors, because you've done a good job of this and finding things that relate to people from the past and things they may have owned or may have been tied into. And I've done a little of this myself lately, but this is exciting and fun stuff. It is. We have so many more things because of the internet nowadays to be able to reach out to areas where we don't live to collect things. And eBay is a great example of millions of items on online, and many of them belong to relatives of someone you know, that's right. All you have to do is search and, you know, you can put up to 100 search terms in there and you put in people's names or last names and who knows what you're going to find. But there's also Craigslist and then, you know, there's the local garage sales and the and the other types of online sales that you can go to or local swap meets because people clean out attics and these are cousins or second cousins uh, and they had things that belong to ancestors and there's just a lot of great stuff out there. It's photographs, it's scrapbooks, it's medals from a World War II uh, unit that your grandfather may not have saved, but somebody else did, and you right. can buy it and make a shadow box. Well, a couple of thoughts on that, because I've done this myself. It's a great thing to collect your parents, for instance. Absolutely. I, I found my father's high school yearbooks. Now, he was quite a bit older than I. He had me at 41. And so he went to high school, graduated in 1931 in New Jersey. I found somebody had placed his four yearbooks, not the ones that belonged to him, but to one of his classmates from the four years he went to that school on eBay, 
And I was able to buy all four of them for $60 because I didn't have them. They, he just didn't have me, didn't keep them, and they never got passed down. And many times you'd find that he actually signed those yearbooks. He did. He actually signed all these yearbooks, and you could see his teenage signature in there. And there are 10 photographs of him I'd never seen before, you know, where he was involved with the sophomore class presidency or he was on the basketball team, things I had never seen before that I was able to find on eBay. You know, you have to be a little bit of a cop or a sleuth to be able to find a lot of these things, but they are there. Yeah. Uh, just a quick example. Um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, one of the newspapers in town asked me to provide them with somebody who's sold things on eBay. And from that article, somebody contacted him and they sold him and I a set of uh, glass negatives and uh, a photograph. And out of it, we were able to find a very prominent person in the community Here's a person who was unidentified, and I spent about a day trying to find out who that person was, but now I'm getting all sorts of emails from people thanking me for finding the only image of their progenitor out there. Wow. Isn't that exciting? It is. It's great. It's it's like the guy that found the uh, printed copy of the Declaration of Independence in the old frame, you know, that somebody put a horrible painting in front of. Yeah. (laughs) Well, let's go through some more examples, because I think as people think about this, they might realize there's more out there maybe than you imagine. Now, I had a great-grandfather who was a New York veteran fireman. Right. He had been a, a volunteer in the 1850s with the old hand pumpers. And then in the 1880s, he belonged to the New York Veteran Firemen's Association. And these guys liked to play hard, just as they had fought the fires. And in, in 1887, they made this trip across the country from New York to San Francisco and back. And so I have started collecting memorabilia relating to that trip. They didn't belong to my great-grandfather, but he would have had a ribbon that was given to him by the Denver firemen when they came through, for instance. He would have had a badge or a medal that was presented to him on a a side trip to Newburgh, New York. And I've been able to find those things on eBay and add them to the collection. It's great because you can find those things. We talked about military units. You can find medals that your great-grandfather or grandfather back to the Civil War had earned. Right. And like I said, you you find photographs, you find medals, you find, you know, some people collect guns, some people collect, you know, I recently, uh, through genealogy, got my, like, sixth great-grandfather's flintlock rifle. No. Yeah, it was great. It's a 1790s flintlock rifle, and another relative had it and was able, I purchased it from that relative because it meant a lot to me. Now, that's interesting because now we're going into a different area here, and it's really kind of back to the basics, and that is most of the good stuff is in the hands of family members. It is. You just have to find out who they are and ask. And there's a lot of reverse genealogy that goes on to find things. I do this all the time when I'm looking for specific individuals and I'm looking for a photograph or a or an item. Letters are probably the best because people keep letters. Right. And There are some wonderful letters still out there from the Civil War. Even before then, people communicated home and you read emotion and the and the fear and the cold and the depravity and the horror of war. And if it's your relative, it just gives you goose pimples. I mean it just Yeah, that that connection. Oh, it's 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 unbelievable. It's like finding something that they wrote and left behind in a little box that nobody had ever seen before. Exactly. And if you can track down, when you talked about reverse genealogy, you're talking about researching forward, right? Yeah. You go forward, you go down, you go back two or three generations, and then you go to brothers and sisters, and then you go down on those, and you just keep crossing off people. And a lot of people, you know, I hate to say it, you know, after grandpa dies, they take everything out to a a barrel and they burn it. And, you know, it just makes you sick. But that's how it used to be because people thought that's junk. Right. Who needs that anymore? Today's junk is, gosh, awful awful valuable. We've had uh, a lot of discussions on the show recently with various experts about old family Bibles and how they're typically chucked when you get to the point where somebody has passed away and how many of them have been actually rescued from the trash bin. I went to a friend of mine who owns an antique shop and he had a Bible that was just sort of stacked up and it had no cover to it. But when I opened it up to the center, I found the deaths and the births, and one of the family members died aboard the Titanic. Whoa! And, you know, he was a uh, steward on the Titanic. I immediately bought it because there was value there. Sure. So a friend of mine purchased it from me, 
and he's had it rebound, and now it's part of his collection on the Titanic. So let's go through it real quickly uh, because we are running out of time. But sure. the idea would be then for eBay, you want to do search terms in there where they will send you an email. That's right. You want to do search terms where you place in your family name, especially if it's not Smith or Jones. But if you have an unusual family name, sometimes it's like all the daguerreotypes and ambrotypes that come up and tintypes. 80% of them don't have names. But if they do, they include that in their listing. That's right. And if they have a family name and a location, you got a relative. Exactly. And then you've got the opportunity to put in uh, terms like organizations they belong to. Right. Like the New York Veteran Firemen's Association. Absolutely. And that would come up. And then, of course, you can do the searches and, of course, trace down family members and see what they've got. Military units. You can do police officers. You can do farmers, farm implements. That's why people have on their wall the Pepsi sign, the Coke sign. Yes. The John Deere tractor sign on there because... There is an association with that historically with their family. If they grew up on the farm, you know, it's great to have a milk pill over in the corner. Yeah, exactly right. But you can get it much more personal and closer to the events even than that. Yes. With the way things are now. And track down those other descendants as well because they've got all kinds of things that you would have never thought of. Well, and as we continue to do more and more in the digitization and the indexing of those images, and they could be books, they could be all sorts of things, you're finding that universities have million, two million photographs. They're going to index something that is going to hit on you. So, I mean, for example, I go to the University of West Virginia, and I put in the hometown. All of a sudden, they've got a class from 1901, And there's a relative in this photograph that you've never seen before. There you go. Yearbooks also. Another great way to go. And and, and they don't have to have belonged to your people, but they were in the class. A number of companies, Ancestry.com, they're out reaching out and they're finding yearbooks all the time and they're scanning them. So you can get the images that way or you can own the original. And how fun is that? It's a lot more fun to own the original. Ron Fox, thanks so much for joining us again today. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you much. And coming up next, our preservation authority, Tom Perry, is back to answer your questions on Extreme Genes, Family History Radio and ExtremeGenes.com. Hi, Genies, it's Fisher, and I've been telling you about MyHeritage.com's amazing new technology that searches your family tree day and night for you, finding matches even while you sleep in documents and other people's trees. Here's a find I never would have made without it. It's a newspaper story about a relative of mine, Paul Sagal, who I knew many years ago. It's from 1943, when Paul was serving in the Pacific. When he learned his father died, he wrote a poem to his brother that indicated he wouldn't be returning for the funeral. He wrote, There'll be no furlough for me. I'm in the Marines, you see, alive and well as I am. Memories I'll keep of my dad. Then the newspaper editor added, These are all the sentiments that will win this war. There are treasures like this one waiting for you now. Put MyHeritage.com's superb technology to work for you with a 20% discount. Just enter the one-word promo code ExtremeGenes. MyHeritage.com is the next big thing. It will soon be here again, the largest family history event in the world. It's the 5th Annual Roots Tech Conference in Salt Lake City, Utah, February 12th through the 14th, 2015. Hosted by FamilySearch, Roots Tech is the perfect place to discover and share family connections past, present, and future. Keynote speakers like family man and entertainer Donny Osmond and the founder of the upcoming global family reunion, A.J. Jacobs, will inspire and entertain you. Explore the massive expo hall with hundreds of technology and family history exhibitors. Visit the world-renowned Salt Lake Family History Library right across the street and choose from more than 200 educational classes taught by family history professionals. Early bird pricing is just $159 for a three-day pass. But hurry, it's only available for a limited time. Find out more now and get registered at RootsTech.org. That's RootsTech.org. It's RootsTech 2015, February 12th through 14th at the Salt Palace Convention Center in Salt Lake City, Utah. Your priceless 8mm home movies and your precious family videos are deteriorating right now. Heat, moisture, insects, dust, mold, time, they're all robbing you of your family's memories. It's time to preserve those treasures right now by digitizing them at tmcplace.com. 
They've been preserving memories for over 40 years. Home movies, videos, audio tapes, vinyl records, photos, slides, and even scrapbooks. Whether your treasures are enduring the humidity of Massachusetts or the heat of Arizona, TMCPlace.com can digitize your audio and images without harming the originals and returning them to you with free shipping both ways on most orders. TMCPlace.com can even let you track your package in real time with a special GPS tracking device. Trustworthy, experienced, affordable. Call TMCPlace.com toll-free at 1-866-483-1717 to talk to Extreme Genes Preservation Authority Tom Perry about your project or order online at shop.tmcplace.com. And welcome back to Extreme Genes Family History Radio, ExtremeGenes.com. Fisher here, the radio root sleuth with Tom Perry, our preservation authority from TMCPlace.com. And Tom sounds a lot deeper and richer in his voice. What are you fighting here? I don't know. I just decided to bring my radio voice today. (laughs) Very raspy. Very (laughs) raspy. Okay. So we do have a question. It's from Jake Richter in Carmel, New York. He says, uh, first of all, love your program and tips. We thank you, Jake. First, will your reunion campus be available for booking in late August? I oh yeah, absolutely. In <laughs> fact, our contractors are you know busting their butt, and it kind of depends on what exactly you want. But most of our facility will be open by then. Like the swimming pool and the RV hookups probably won't be completed by then, but most of the stuff will be ready. Second, have you folks thought of going public or using Kickstart so we can get in on the preservation juggernaut? <laughs> All right. So tell people who don't know what Kickstart is. Okay, Kickstart's kind of a funding program where if you have an idea for a board game or an electronic item or a lot of different things, you can go in there and put how much you're trying to raise, what the product is, if you've got samples, exactly where you are in Kickstart, you can go in and say, oh, yeah, I want to put a dollar towards this or $5 or $20. And if they receive their full funding, then your credit card is run. If they don't receive the full funding they requested, then you're not out anything. And there's been some pretty major companies that have started on Kickstart. However, I don't believe Kickstart does real estate, so it's probably not for us. And as far as going public, I think that's down the road a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want more information on our campus, you can always just go to tmcplace.com. Or if you want to email us with specific questions about it, our email is garland at tmcplace.com for our reunion campus. Hey, I got something that's really, really cool, especially for you people who are starting to plan family reunions right now. It's in the June issue of Popular Mechanics. It's called a bear proof cooler. The what? A bear proof oh, cooler. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> Hasn't everybody wanted one of these? I remember camping, you know, when I was young, and we actually had a bear come into camp, picked up our cooler on his hind legs, no. and walked out of camp with it. No. Seriously, my uncle took after him with the chair and threw it at him. And with a blunderbuss? Didn't, didn't even break his stride. He just kept on going. <laughs> but, you know, people always tell you that. Like when we go camping with the scouts, we always have to hang stuff from trees and don't put candy or food or anything in your tent. Right. Nothing. Even if it's wrapped, don't take that chance because if the bear smells it, you could have all kinds of problems. So if you want to read this, it's in the June issue of Popular Mechanics. And the winner of the contest was called the Pelican Pro Gear 35 QT, which costs about $260. And it's a good size one. It's about 26 by 28 by 18. And what they did besides, you know, putting marshmallows and Kool-Aid and all kinds of cool stuff in the cooler so the bear would go after it, they threw it out of an SUV at 50 miles an hour. They threw it off a cliff. And it was amazing how they withstood it all. And this one, the Pelican Pro Gear, took everything. It beat the bear. It beat being thrown out. <laughs> The SUV, everything. <laughs> so if you want a good cooler and you got 260 bucks, I would highly recommend it. Well, you know, I'm thinking, okay, 260 sounds steep. I mean, it's not really on my list of where I would want to put $260. But if it's a family reunion and there's a risk of a bear coming in, I might be in on that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, most people know they're supposed to hang the stuff in the trees. Most people don't put stuff in your tent. You know, we had a neighbor that actually had some wrapped candy in his tent, and a bear broke in, and he slept through the whole thing because the next morning they saw there was a hole in the tent, and all of his candy was gone. But, I mean, if the bear would have gone a little bit more right or left and got one of the kids, I mean, oh. how can you put a price on something like that? And you hear these horror stories periodically. Oh, so. it's awful. It's awful. So, But what a great idea, oh, huh? Yeah. 260 bucks, and you've got a pretty much uh, indestructible cooler. All right, what are we going to talk about next? Okay, next up, we're going to get into a little bit about 3D printers, which we talked about. There's some new technology coming on and some new copyright questions. All right, now, now, baby, your throat, and we'll be back in three minutes on Extreme Jeans Family History Radio at ExtremeJeans.com. Looking for
for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Masters' option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. When was the last time you heard your grandmother's voice or saw your family enjoying life back in the 1950s or 60s? If the reason is you haven't known what to do with your old recordings, videos, and films, here's your answer. The Multimedia Center in Salt Lake City. We brought in a video project to the Multimedia Center, and overnight, they duplicated it to DVD so we could meet our deadline. The Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to Transfer Duplication. Com. Hello, Extreme Jeans listeners. I'm Larry Gelwix, the getaway guru and host of the Travel Show radio broadcast with the hottest travel deals on the planet. And now you can travel more and pay less by joining me on our Travel Show podcast. Cruises, tours, resort hotels, airline tickets, stay close to home or travel the world. I'll show you how to travel more and pay less. Go online to columbusvacations.com. That's columbusvacations.com. Click on radio. Video, and then click on podcast. It's really that simple. ColumbusVacations.com, radio and podcast for the hottest travel deals on the planet. Can't figure out how to get your favorite Windows genealogy software running on your MacBook? Look no further than Crossover. Crossover by Codeweavers at www.codeweavers.com allows you to run your Windows software on your Mac without the need to buy a copy of Windows. Crossover is easy to install and simple to use. Crossover supports many popular genealogy packages like Roots Magic, Legacy Family Tree, Personal Ancestral File, Family Tree Builder, and more. Crossover also lets you run other popular productivity apps like Microsoft Office and a wide range of games. So if you're looking for an easy, affordable solution to your Windows compatibility needs, Visit www.codeweavers.com today to download your free trial of Crossover. And don't forget to use the deal code FAMILY for an additional 40% off when you purchase Crossover. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. ZapTheGrandmaGap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. And welcome back. You have found us, Extreme Genes Family History Radio. It is Fisher here, the Radio Root Sleuth, with Tom Perry. He's our preservation authority from TMCPlace.com. And, uh, Tom, you were saying you you got stuff on 3D printers here, and and hopefully you caught the earlier segment on the show, where the 3D printer actually recreated the spine of King Richard III to determine he was not a hunchback, as Shakespeare had intimated, and that, that he actually had scoliosis. You know, it's just amazing what this 3D printing is. In fact, I just heard of somebody, they'd done a 3D model of a baby's heart, and it's so small, 
It allowed the doctors to go in and practice surgery before they really did the real thing. Because they made a large version of it. Yeah, exactly. So they could see exactly what it was, what the problem was, where things were, and then practice on that before they went and did the real operation. I mean, it's incredible. Well, 3D printers can have applications for family history as well. We've talked about it a little bit in the past. Let's see where it's going. It's pretty crazy. Like you talked about doing an old watch that used to belong to grandfather, things like this. There's a lot of different things. And we've had some people that have basically bitten the bullet and bought a home 3D printer printer and says, now what do I do? Well, you know, <laughs> yeah, I spent all this money. Yeah, now I got what? this 3D printer and I fixed all the parts of my toilet. So I don't need anything more <laughs> like that anymore. <laughs> yeah. If you've got a 3D printer and you're looking for stuff to print, you can go to a place. I'm going to spell it because if you pronounce it, you're going to have too many G's in it. <laughs> it is dot com. So it's kind of like Thinkiverse.com, T-H-I-N-G-I-V-E-R-S-E.com. Okay. And they've got all kinds of things you can download and, you know, play with your 3D printer. Now, well, what has happened is some people have actually gone to this site and said, hey, cease and desist. You can't have our items on there. For instance, like Disney has been really neutral about this. There, you can go and download Yoda, you know, is owned by Disney. You can download and make little models of him. And Disney, to not get in the fracas, so to speak, is amazing because I've done a lot of contract work with Disney, and they're really touchy on this. But there's a Belgian company and HBO that have sent these people cease and desist orders saying, you need to take this offline. We don't want people making our product. Huh. But the biggest thing you need to remember with 3D printers is 3D printers aren't cheap. It's made out of plastic, the stuff that you're making, and they take a long time. So nobody's going to go and do knockoffs because you can go to China and make stuff really, really cheap. If you're trying to do it with your 3D printer, who's going to pay more money for a knockoff? Well, and the idea that these companies think they're going to stop this technology by saying, well, what people might use these for are going to impact us, so you can't provide your machine is, is absurd. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That will never happen. That'd be like trying to make people that have CD recorders not be able to have CD recorders because they might get their vinyl and turn it into a CD and sell them. Right. So it's totally different. The manufacturing of little teeny one-off type things is never going to be a thing for the black market. It makes no sense at all. Some companies like Hasbro, they're actually setting up a site where kids will be able to go online, design their own little toys, and then print them out on their uh, parents' 3D printer. Oh, wow. So it's really smart. <laughs> These guys, you know, hey, we're not going to fight it. Let's join it. Let's do something that can make this really good. Well, wouldn't you think that Hasbro would want kids to be able to design the thing and then put it on their own Hasbro's 3D printer and ship it to these people? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm sure that's probably down the pike. That makes a lot of sense. Well, I'm looking forward to the price coming down on these things, and we can recreate our family's memorabilia and distribute it to all the cousins. Oh, absolutely. That's what will be the neatest thing. You come to a reunion. You bring the old clock or whatever, you know, bring it in. We'll scan it for you. We'll make 3D prints, and then everybody in the family that wants one can go home with one. It won't be the same thing, but it'll be a facsimile. Unbelievable. Thanks, Tom. Good to see you again. We'll catch you next week. Hope you're feeling better. Yep, I hope I lose my radio voice by next week. <laughs> hey, thanks again for joining us. Thanks to Ron Fox for talking to us about finding ancestral material on eBay. Yeah, I've done it, and you can too. And Daniel Schwalm of Minnesota, who learned that his grandmother, who was born in Minnesota and lived there her entire life and never left the country, died as a citizen of no country at all. If you didn't catch those segments, catch it on the podcast. Download the free Extreme Genes podcast app for your iPhone and Android. We'll catch you again next week. And remember, as far as everyone knows, we're a nice, normal family. 